Okay, uh, welcome guys. Uh, this is the NFTX monthly governance call. Uh, just doing an introduction. It's the 1st of September today. Uh, we'll go through a bunch of topics today, including protocol and product updates. Uh, and uh, yeah, let's just get started. Let's not uh, waste too much time on the intro. Um, before we do protocol updates, I, I, I want to uh, make two updates on my side. So the first update is on Rary protocol. Uh, so a couple of days ago, uh, we've been working with the Rary team for uh, like a few weeks now discussing on if uh, some vault tokens of NFTX could be used on their Fuse uh, product. Uh, and after discussions, uh, we ended up drafting a proposal to get started with uh, making an NFTX vault Fuse pool. Uh, getting started with the highest liquidity vaults from our sides, uh, which are uh, Glyph and Bunks. Uh, so we drafted that into a proposal a few days ago, posted it on the forums, and then posted it on their snapshot. So their governance had to vote for that. Uh, and that's passed uh, a couple hours ago now, I think six hours ago. Uh, and it passed in favor, so that's great. Uh, so we'll be getting a few spool up with Rary. Uh, there's some like technical details uh, that we have to deliver yet, uh, like the Oracle on our side, uh, but that shouldn't take too much time. And I think, Javri and Nick, uh, you're on that, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool. Um, so that's the first point. Like, like also, I forgot to say during the intro, if anybody has like a question uh, during the call, just interrupt anyone uh, and ask, feel free to ask. Um, so that's the first point, uh, that's great. Um, and then the second point is that we're working on, uh, like with multiple audit firms at the moment, sourcing uh, the possibility to do an actual, like full-fledged audit on V2, instead of just a code review that we've done with Code Arena earlier. Um, it's a pretty lengthy process of planning and getting a spot because like everybody wants an audit these days. Um, so I'm, I'm working on that. Uh, I've got a few calls set up, uh, in the upcoming weeks. Uh, and from there on, we'll like move slowly and steadily to doing the audit properly. Uh, and that's it from my side. Uh, so I think next up is protocol update, uh, from Alex, I Alex, you're leaving in like the second yeah. half so probably yeah yeah um i'll talk and, and a little cool. bit about uh, protocol as well because i don't think kiwi yeah. is here um and also just a little bit of big picture stuff um uh, mm -hmm. like over the last month we were set back a bit with the staking zap uh fixes um there ended up needing to be two fixes and we had to get people to migrate a second time um which was a pain and then we're currently in the process of redistributing rewards that people missed out on because of this mix up or like uh, the migration. So we were hoping to have that done before the meeting, uh, but we got a little caught up, but that's gonna be happening today um, that we'll be redistributing um, lost rewards and people, if people have any like concerns about uh, discrepancies, um, we posted the JSON and the script to GitHub and we're happy to like talk those over on Discord other than that, um, it's been a crazy month with prices and it's definitely stress test um, NFTX V2 since we're now focused more on liquidity and uh, yield and the ability for people to earn more in fees. Uh, and with these huge price increases, basically the impermanent loss has uh, overtaken fees for a lot of stakers. So like just before the call, we were talking about uh, how a lot of us have pulled our staking liquidity. Um, I've pulled most of mine just because I got demolished on impermanent loss so badly. But for the most part, like everything's working well in the way it should be. Um, we think it's just a matter of optimizing some different parameters. Um, really, it comes down to increasing foot traffic so that there's more fees getting earned um like more shoppers and then it's also a matter of potentially increasing fees um and increasing the random redeem fees just so that stakers are making more on each actual piece of activity uh, and a, in a lot of ways it's like a flywheel 
Um, you have to get it going. And vaults can kind of enter this death spiral phase where liquidity goes down. So people stop shopping there as much. So people stop paying fees. So the stakers stop earning. So they pull more liquidity. Um, and, and it sounds bad, uh, but I do think that with the features we have for the next four to six weeks, um, we can make a huge difference and potentially turn things around um, for the stakers, even if prices keep going up like they are. Um, and the main features that we're looking into doing are the buys apps and ETH pricing. So like right now, if someone wants to buy a particular NFT, it's a pretty complicated process. You have to come, uh, you know, you look at which NFT you want, you go over to Sushi, you buy your vault tokens, and you come back, and then you redeem with your vault tokens. So we want to kind of streamline all that so that users don't actually have to leave our website. Um, so that that all happens behind the scene. All they see is the ETH price, or, price that they have to pay. Um, and then they pay that Ether price, and it goes to Sushi, buys the vault tokens, comes back, and on their end, it just looks like they're buying an NFT. Uh, so we think that can increase the foot traffic. And then, like I mentioned, we're also going to be increasing the random redeem fees um, so that we're just not getting ARB quite as hard. And we will be considering uh, increasing fees overall. So right now, it's like 5% um, spread on both sides. Uh, we want to abstract that fee away. And we think once we have the ETH pricing, then it'll be easier to start, you know, maybe try like a 7.5% fee. Um, and since that fee is kind of abstracted away, it'll be less of a deterrent to shoppers who don't like actually seeing the fees in their face. Uh, and then lastly, in terms of liquidity, um, the idea that we have planned. So like right now, the Bored Apes vault, it's kind of unwound because of the recent drop. A lot of people pulled their inventory and their liquidity. And as a result of that, I think the price impact to buy a single base C e token is close to 100%. Or at least it was yesterday. So it was like, you know, base E tokens, like $45 is the trading price, but it's like close, or not dollars, Ether, but it's close to 90 Ether to buy a full one, um, which isn't good. Um, and I think we can solve that problem by sourcing liquidity from OpenSea. So basically, if somebody wanted a board ape out of our vault, they could go to OpenSea, they could buy a floor ape, they could take it back, and then they could swap it with the one from our vault. And by doing that, they would be able to get the board ape out of our vault for a price of just basically 5% above the open sea floor. Um, and again, we don't want users having to figure this out for themselves, have to come look at our prices, look at open sea, then go to open sea, buy that, come back. So we think if we can get a zap going, similar to the sushi buy zap, where it basically checks if it's cheaper to buy an open sea and to swap instead of buying directly. Um, that could, again, really improve the shopping experience, and it would still be earning fees uh, for stakers. So, yeah, those three things are basically the three things we're focused on most for the next month, which is the, the buys apps and the single-sided staking and sourcing liquidity from other sources like OpenSea and potentially Larva Labs. Um, and we're hoping that that makes a big difference and, you know, people like myself will start staking our liquidity again. Um, and the APR will be back to three digits. So I think that mostly wraps up my points. I, I will be leaving in about 20 minutes. Um, yeah. Hopefully I didn't cover too much of the stuff that Nick was going to talk about. <laughs> but <laughs> nice introduction. I kinda, I mean, I kinda, that was longer than planned. Sorry about that. No, no, uh, but yeah, uh, feel free to like cover those topics again. Uh, I'll pass it back to Chop, I guess. Yeah, I think it's it's fine if we if we continue with Nick. Like, if you want to continue, Nick, uh, like uh, just a small yeah, update yeah. on product I'll just, side. I'll, I'll just uh, yeah add some some small bits to that. So yeah, really great intro to those three things. So like yeah, we've got this problem right now where we're in this incredible NFT bull market, and actually the the, the marketplace isn't working as we'd hope because as Alex was saying, there's a lot of impermanent loss as prices move, um, and that's causing liquidity to drop, and then you know having a detrimental effect on trading volumes. So we think we can solve this um, with a couple of ways, which is one, to um, generate more fees, uh, to incentivize more stakers to join and provide liquidity, and then also to use single-sided staking as a way to um, allow people to stake and earn yield without any risk of impermanent loss. And then Alex's third point, which was around getting secondary market swaps, which would be incredibly useful. Um, that's something we're also planning. Um, but in the very immediate term, we're looking to get uh, 
the site, first of all, are priced in ETH. So there's no more of this going to Sushi, buying these tokens and then trading them out. And then also the single side of staking. Uh, so we think these together will have a major impact on uh, making the site as well feel more like a marketplace because we've also noticed there's a fair number of users still consider NFTX to be like an index token or, or something like that. Um, we feel like once we've got uh, ETH pricing in place, we're going to quickly become obviously like much more obviously a, 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 one of the the first uh, decentralized uh, NFT marketplaces. Uh, and that will tie in as well with the shift of domain name. Uh, Alex may have mentioned on the last golf call that we've uh, got nftx.io now. Uh, so we're switching out to that um, and yeah, relaunching uh, with the main focus on getting shoppers in and trading and generating fees for our inventory providers. Um, and an update since last month, we've now got June, June Analytics dashboards as well. So uh, the links are in the docs.nftx.org uh, website. So if you want to check out the June Analytics dashboards, you can go there on the left. Um, and in there, we've got protocol uh, revenue, uh, fees and volumes, um, as well as like active users and active vaults. And then we've also got uh, analytics dashboards for every single vault that we have. Um, and I think quite positively, something we've seen, which is in the Penelope's Country Club vault, is that they seeded about 800 items and the level of activity, like despite all this impermanent loss that we've been talking about and everything else, the level of activity they've had and like fees and um, the distribution of tokens amongst holders um, is extremely healthy. So once we've got and like we've proven that we can make a decentralized NFT marketplace work, I think we will quickly see that projects will find out that when they do seed liquidity or when community members do seed liquidity, you can create a very, very healthy marketplace um, and a lot of uh, yield for, for those who are providing inventory as well. So yeah, that probably uh, covers everything from my side. I mean, in terms of timeframes, ETH pricing we're looking at for next week. So that is very much, um, right high up on our priority list uh, and single site staking later in September. Um, and I'll jump in there quick if you don't mind there. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, just to comment on the Penelope vault because I, I do, I forgot to mention that. I think uh, it's interesting. So yeah, like Nick said, they basically um, seeded a vault with like 700 NFTs um, from the start and it's done really well. Um, and I think our model, um, basically because our model builds on top of a, the AMM model, um, it works really well when there is a lot of liquidity. Um, and it's just when there's weak liquidity that it kind of enters into this death spiral. Um, and a lot of people have been asking like whether we plan on incentivizing um, projects um, and people to kind of create pools. And it's definitely something we're keeping our mind open to. Uh, but we also were hoping that um, the direction the NFT space is moving is that projects will start looking after their liquidity needs themselves. Um, it's basically what we saw in the DeFi space, you know, like 2019-ish. Um, I think DeFi projects, like they had their tokens on Uniswap, but they weren't really actively incentivizing liquidity in most cases. Uh, you know, Uniswap, they, didn't, they just kind of chilled out they, they didn't try to actively get people to um, pump the pools. And eventually with enough time, DeFi projects caught on and started taking care of the liquidity themselves to the point that it kind of became like a full-blown obsession like last summer um, where DeFi projects were competing on you know, how much liquidity they could offer on Uniswap and then SushiSwap. So I do think you know, there's definitely something to be said for us just focusing on enabling projects to offer better liquidity if they want to. Um, and that if the space moved in that direction, it would be a really good thing for us. But if for whatever reason in a month, two months time, things are still happening slowly, a lot of vaults are still struggling, then we're definitely open to, you know, subsidizing or creating some sort of incentives. Um, it's just, we, we'd rather not rely on that. Um, and it, I'm hopeful that more, more collections kind of do what Pernelope's did and, you know, take care of liquidity themselves. Yeah. 
Yeah, to add also to that, uh, like the the liquidity stuff and especially the price impact on uh, like NFTs that have their floor prices going up. Like Base C is a very good example. Um, they kind of have a hard time being very uh, like useful as a pool, right? Like uh, unless some mega whale uh, is a uh, is LPing, it's it's kind of becoming a like an impossible vault to sustain, even even with liquidity mining, probably. Um, but the, the the thing is that it's like it's good that the DeFi sector itself is also kind of moving forward, uh, and uh, Sushi, uh, like we're using their it's V1 uh, right now, uh, which is just a normal like old school AMM. Uh, but they're also coming up with this uh, thing called Trident, which is essentially the same as V3 Uniswap in terms of like concentrated liquidity, not the same, but you know. Uh, and also different like types of uh, like LP mechanism. So we'll obviously also look into that once that's there uh, to make the vault even more useful to the users, uh, especially the shoppers. Yeah, absolutely. Um, sorry, just grab a drink. Okay. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, I think that's the agenda for today in terms of like topics to cover. What's that? Oh, sorry. I, sh I should have been <laughs> muted. Yeah, My bad. No problem, Ignore no me. Um, so yeah, I think that the topics we want to cover uh, are kind of done. Um, normally we have a, like a QA uh, for anyone to ask questions. Uh, so if anyone, anybody in uh, this call has any questions right now uh, on the like topics we spoke about or any other topic, uh, like feel free to ask now uh, so we can answer them. Uh, and if there's if there's none, we'll, we'll just uh, wrap it up, I think. Uh, yeah, I mean, if there's if there's nothing else, I also I'll quickly uh, mm -hmm. mention price and treasury and stuff because I know it's something on a lot of people's mind. Um, and basically now on Zapper, you can go and check the treasury um, valuation um, pretty easily. And I think it's sitting at around like 100 million, um, including the NFTX tokens we have in there, which, you know, adds a little bit of nuance. Um, but yeah, basically our market cap is like around the same as our treasury value. So uh, it's a nice place to be because... Um, you know, you don't have to really worry about price going down. Um, I think markets in this interesting phase right now where like NFTs are shooting up, people aren't paying as much attention to DeFi. Um, and then with our recent pivot, you know, we've kind of made our product more complex. Um, but for the most part, I think we're s so well positioned, um, you know, like our $5 million raise from less than a year ago is now worth like, you know, the 50 million or more, you know, plus these NFTX tokens in the treasury. Um, so, so yeah, no, that's, it's great. And um, yeah, I think, I think price is good. So to all the people asking me about treasury, um, you can just go check on Zapper now. Yeah, that's nice. It's also not double counting anymore now. So that's, uh, that's good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool, man. Uh, yeah, I think if nobody has a, has a question to ask, we can just uh, round it up uh, and then we'll uh, like do the next governance call next month, first Wednesday. Yeah, we can just wait a second and make sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Anyone's little stage fright sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> we actually have some people that joined in the call this, this month for the first time in a while, so... The space must be picking up. And I think we just um, we just hit a million dollars in fees, right, Nick? Uh, no, we're up to two almost. So oh, like we had a holy. million. Yeah, in the last thirty days as well. So yeah, one point nine four million. Oh, okay. So a million dollars in the last thirty days is what we yeah, did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, and that's that's epic. I mean, yeah. that's definitely something for us to be proud of. 
uh, regardless of how much impermanent loss was yeah. taken on. <laughs> yeah, the tune dashboard looks really healthy. I mean, we're seeing a real stagnation in like the number of NFTs going in. Exactly. That's that's the problem, yeah. It's so. the inventory numbers that are, are worrisome, but the yeah, the TVL and the fees are, yeah. are fantastic. It'll be cool once we've got these features to see how it impacts the data, like how the data kind of goes. But I, I'm confident it will start ticking up again. So yeah. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Me too. Got my bags packed. <laughs> Good man. All let's, right. Uh, let's wrap it up. All right. Yeah, go for it. Great. Uh, yeah, well, thanks everybody for joining. Uh, of course, the next uh, Gonas call is next month and then the first Wednesday. So that's the 6th of October. Uh, so uh, same, same place, same time. Uh, and in between, we'll keep you updated through all the blog posts and uh, social activity and also Discord, of course. So thanks everybody for joining and uh, see you next time. All right, see you guys later. See ya. Bye-bye.